there. And share screen. All right. Bring this down. Press play. There we go. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody, on this nice, sunshiny, warm day in May. May 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be like the coldest, you know, I've never seen it this cold. It was snowing when I got up this morning. I know. Like, Get it's out of town. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So, but today, we won't keep you long today. Today is about uh, pricing listings to sell or listings priced to sell. And uh, I know Debbie and I both talk to agents a lot about pricing uh, listings and the importance of pricing them right and, uh, and all of that. So we're going to go over some ideas and some things to think about when having that discussion with your sellers about pricing their listings. So we'll go to the first slide, first slide. and you take it from here, Deb. Uh, of course, this one should be pretty obvious to everybody, but uh, setting your price slightly low. So everybody wants to start out with the big number, you know, but sometimes that can backfire on you. And we'll get into that when we talk about absorption rate. Um, but when you're doing all of your uh, preliminary information for your seller before you meet with them, make sure you're doing your CMA make it a nice round picture for them so they can see everything that's happening. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're in a buyer's market or a seller's market, if you keep it on the down low or the lower side of things, then you're going to get activity. You know, it's the ones that are sitting there at the highest price that are going to wait. Uh, so you do get more option for, for multiple offers when you go on the lower side or even the mid side, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but we're still there, guys. We're still in a seller's market because there's not enough inventory and we do have more buyers than we have homes. So let's get them sold for them. And the more that we communicate with the public, the more they'll feel more comfortable uh, putting sure. the homes up for sale and getting the buyers to come in. Do you agree? I, I totally agree. And this is a time like, well, I mean, it's May 2nd, spring here, or when's, when's the official day of spring? I think May 20 something, <laughs> I don't know. But we know spring market and going to early summers, the, the more busier time, more uh, listings coming up. So I tell agents, when you're listing about now or you have listings now that haven't sold yet, you better be watching the new ones coming up because they're just going to use you as a benchmark of where to list their property. So hypothetically, you have a property that's been in the market one, two months or more and say you're at Let's do two ninety nine nine. You know, on that, and we, you haven't moved it much. You might miss out on a buyer because someone, when someone's using your listing, remember every agent uh, in the in the market that has a listing appointment in a in a house in your area is using your information. Yep. And they're going to go. Well, do you want to sell? Uh, quicker, let's do to eighty nine nine. And next, you know, you never know. So you, sometimes people have the 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 thought process. Well, it's so close. Any buyer is going to come in and look at that house and look at this house. Also, they're going to look at your pictures. They're going to look at your description and try to be better because you're the competition. So we're going to make our house look better. Pictures look better. You know. So if you don't start off right price, right uh, complete, great marketing, great photos, good description description, everything, people are going to use you as to get more for their house, but just put, slightly put it under yours. Yeah. So, so many times agents wait until they have, uh, the listing is expired till they search, oh my gosh, a bunch of houses sold while I had my house for sale. They had no clue, or even worse, is if your seller throughout the listing period is telling you what's selling. Or, oh, look, one of my neighbor's houses went on the market and they're calling you. Hey, did you know one of your neighbor's houses go on the market? Well, Deb, we both know there's a very easy way to notify yourself. Set yourself up on a search <laughs> so yep. for your listing So any, in your area. So anything new, pending, uh, you know, go, sold, it, it lets you know so you can let your clients know. Uh, your, uh, before they find out or see it somewhere else. So they show that you're on top of it. We could go on and on and on about different things and like this, but we just want to give you some ideas to think about. Yep. Go ahead, Deb. 
So number two is the research. So we're back to that absorption rate that everybody is scared of, but don't be scared of it, okay? Use your CMA. And this just gives you a little idea of uh, how to price it. So when you're doing your range and your CMA, here is a range from 300 to 350,000. Okay, so if you're doing your uh, information off the MLS and you see that there's one month of inventory and it's at, and the listings are not staying on the market very wrong, very long, then you know that this price range is hot, right? So you can go for that higher price and start there because chances are it's not going to matter, right? So if the seller wants to go for that higher price, then start there. You can always start there. You can always lower it if you need to. If there's three months of inventory or more in your market range, then that's normal. And that means that things are, you know, maybe they're 30 days or they're 60 days on the market or even two weeks on the market is kind of a, uh, a little lull these days, then if they want to price it in the middle of the range to try and get multiple offers and such, they can do that. If they have five months of inventory, then if you price it at the lower price, you can get a lot of people competing uh, because the price, the market, the houses will stay on the market a little bit longer. Um, so and that, checking it, out your range and where things fall according to what the inventory is that we have is also going to help your seller when you're talking to them about price. And the quick example, you know, uh, absorption rate is I always try to use is like if you search over the last, say, uh, month uh, and five houses sold between this this price range right now, 300, 350 and you look and say, okay, five houses sold, and right now there's five houses on the market. Well, then easy math is it should take a, a month to sell those. So right. again, five months, five houses sold in a month, and there's five on the market now, then, then you could pretty much tell your seller, your house, if you were priced right or within this range, you're probably gonna sell within a month. But if you're in this price range and it takes five months to sell five homes and five homes are on the market. So if you look back and like, oh, gosh, in the last five months, it took uh, like one a month over the last five months. Then there's five houses on the market. You tell your seller, it could take you five months to sell your house because it took five months to sell the last five. So you better be more uh, aggressive with a better price if you want to be sell quicker. Right, yeah. Deb, is that kind of easy? Competitive to price, it's, yeah. That's yeah, kind that's of where I was going at with this. No, you did. No, so, that was yep. great. All right, yep. let's go. Next one, go ahead. And number three, um, it just depends on what time of the year you're selling. So you might need a time sensitive price, right? So the market does fluctuate according to our seasons, just like everything else that we do. So right now in the spring and the early summer is when everything is starting to ramp up for the summertime when the prices are higher. Once you get towards the end of the summer, the prices are still higher, but they might cool off a little bit. Once you get into the holiday seasons, uh, then you really need to watch your price. And if things have been sitting on the market for a long time, you might want to lower them to get rid of them before the holiday, or they might want to uh, suspend them for a little bit of time and take them temporarily off the market so people can get through their seasons and stuff. But that also comes into play when you are trying to list a house and sell it for a seller. So it depends on uh, what time of year. So I was talking to someone yesterday and they said, oh yeah, I got a listing coming up. They're doing a few things to get the house ready. I said, okay, when do they think they want to list? Oh, not for three or four months. And I'm like, this is a newer agent. So I let them know. I'm like, you know, you're at the end of the season then. You want to get them to list now. So get them into the right mindset when you're talking about your seller about when the best price is going to be able to come to them. And that's during the season when everybody is buying and selling, right? Exactly. I mean, obviously it's whatever is best in their price or their timeline, but you True. tell them this, it's kind of slower in winter, spring, people fix things up. People want to get wait to you know kids are starting to get out of school and they they want to close so they could get into like new school systems to be ready for you know that that's usually typically the kind of thing of why <laughs> and yeah. that. 
<laughs> uh, that then usually midsummer to late summer kind of uh, it slows down a little bit because people are out on vacations and things and wrapping up summer stuff before but it's it's typical right yep people always are buying and selling houses so yep. no time is the wrong time it's just sometimes are better than others no like even when when covid hit uh you know i thought that that time like uh oh this is the time real estate's gonna stop and it didn't i mean people are like no i have to buy i yeah. have to sell i don't care what's going on i need to go see a house i'm moving here or or it was like people like i have my house sold already uh, i need to move out or they rented out my place I, I my lease is only for another month or two so if you concentrate on people that need to buy and people need to sell and any market you're gonna have business <laughs> so did i cut the top of this off uh maybe i moved something around by accident oh okay i think was there something else? home that john dewey's class is next week i think uh um, yeah, the, the um so maybe address, i, I the date something off out. i'll yeah. have to go look and see what the date is on that um, cause this was the month of May, uh, there is a class on Thursday. That's Hash's first class of the month of May. Uh, that's also not listed on here. So that, I don't know. Yeah. I might've, um, I might've was playing around with it a little bit to center it. So my fault, sorry. Yeah, everybody. Nope. That's okay. <laughs> if you want to know when it is, all you gotta do is let us know, <laughs> we will let you but know there's some classes is. for you. These are CEU classes. So you do get credits for them. They're all on zoom. You have to make sure that your camera is on and that you are in the class the whole time in order to get credit for it. None of these are dial in. You cannot dial in for CEU classes. You have right. to be on your computer Physically screen. there. Yep, so. physically there. Next. Um, here's a little bit of stuff that you can post on your social. Uh, these are some stats uh, for 2022 and 2021. So I thought this was really interesting that buyers purchased homes within 15 miles of where they lived in 2021. So they stayed pretty close to where they are now. But in 2022, they went up to up to 50 miles out from where they were living now, um, which just goes to show you that people sometimes you want to make sure that you are uh, broadening your people's horizons when you can't find a home. So even though there's shortage in homes, if you go out in your search criteria area a little bit, you might find them what they're looking for. So don't stay in the box. Always think outside of the box is what I usually say so okay. i just thought this was good stats for you guys you can post this on your social or just know it so that you can talk to people about it intelligently right yeah no exactly the, the a funny story once about where people most people live or where they go i remember it was i was actually watching in uh jeopardy years and years ago and the it was a final jeopardy question you know i did i knew nothing the whole show <laughs> <laughs> nothing like i don't know anything and i was probably sitting with some family or friends and the last question final jeopardy question is uh where uh, something to the fact that I'll try to explain exactly what it said, but said uh, 80 some percent of people live within 50 miles of this. And it was something like that. And I splurted it out right away because I've been in real estate long enough. I didn't even know I had this knowledge. I go where they were born. Yeah. That's it. And then every one of them got it wrong. Everyone, these people that are geniuses, in my opinion, got it all wrong. I'm like, how could they get that wrong? That is the only question I knew right that uh, like 80 some percent of people in this country live within a certain uh, miles of where they were born, which is good for us in real estate. If we want to target market people, you know, just like this statistic, they don't move that far. And yeah. 50 miles, you could, you could uh, farm an area. But to our agents or anybody who's watching this, I kind of like, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a city boy. I grew up in the same on the east side of Cleveland in a five mile radius. So where houses are right next to each other. But, you know, obviously if we have agents that are out all over Ohio, you know, they have, I, I, I feel for you when you go, I, oh, I got to drive two hours to show houses because, you know, there's not <laughs> these neighborhoods, you know, in, in more rural parts of the, uh, of that. But most people live in the same 
county or vicinity. And I bet no matter where you go in the state, you're going to see a lot of that, you know, where you are. So, and then the other joke I met, he's like, oh, you got to concentrate on people moving back to Ohio because there's, you know, which is great because I always tell people you concentrate on family if they have anybody that's out of the state because there's so many times that have agents like oh yeah i'm helping one this person i sold the house to last year their their brother's moving back to ohio or back to cleveland or columbus so you could still market yourself even though they're out of state their people might move back if they were born here keep them on your radar yeah <laughs> There's a chance yep. they're going to come back to family eventually. That happens a lot. And I bet you're probably watching this going, oh, yeah, that's right. My cousin moved back from here and my this and that. And or my parents are getting more elderly. And now their family's kind of trying to be closer to them. It's so always keep in touch with people. They usually uh, a lot of the percentage of people come back to where they were born uh, sometimes. So hopefully that made yeah, sense. And college students too, you know, we do have some agents who are college students and make sure that you are, uh, talking to all of your, um, co-college, uh, bodies out there because you don't know where they're going to live either, you know? So if they get a job in Ohio close to that college, that's great. If they don't, that's fine. You can still help them, uh, by getting a referral from another state. So exactly. you can help anybody. Exactly. And, and I have my first one graduating from college this weekend and coming back home. Oh, so, is he? <laughs> yeah, and I Yay. told him I, I know a very good agent, me, to get him out of the house someday soon. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Hopefully, you know, yeah, 12 months. I don't want you to be 35 years old living in my basement. So yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. find you a house. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching us, everyone. Thanks, Deb. And reach out to us if you need anything. Okay, bye-bye now. Hey, bye-bye.